Hi everyone, um, my name is Buzzy Nielsen. I work um, for the State Library of Oregon and I am really excited that today we have two great guests for our topic talk. Um, we have um, Jenny Peterson from the Deschutes Public Library and Amy Gregory from the Washington County Law Library. And they are gonna talk to us a little bit about Oregon's County Law Library system. So um, without further ado, I will pass it over to them. So hi everybody and welcome to County Law Libraries and You. Our goal today is to help you know more about county law libraries, why we have them, what they offer, and what law librarians do. We hope that with a better understanding of us, you will be better situated to help your patrons. But first, a little about us. My name is Amy Gregory, and I am the Assistant Law Librarian with the Washington County Law Library. Both Jenny and I were asked to present today because both of us have backgrounds in public libraries. I started working in public libraries at 16. As I worked my way through school, I have been a page, a library assistant, and a librarian. Up until a few years ago, when I switched focus to law, I had been a public librarian in various capacities from adult to youth. In fact, right before I switched focus, I was doing story times and planning teen escape rooms. I sometimes miss the days in public libraries, but I find being a law librarian is just as rewarding, but in different ways. And now Jenny. Excellent. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Jenny Peterson, and I'm, uh, I oversee law library services at Deschutes Public Library. Um, for my first 10 years at Deschutes Public Library, I worked as uh, an adult services librarian. Prior to that, I worked as an archivist, writer, and researcher for television news and newspaper newsrooms. So essentially, my entire career was built around being a dilettante. I would learn about new subjects quickly and then share them with others. That all came to a screeching stop when I took over law library services uh, for DPL. For those of you who might not know, DPL runs the county law library for Deschutes. Um, and the one thing I learned is you cannot dilettante legal reference services. The law is too big it's too archaic, it is too multifaceted, it is simply too complex. Uh, the good news is there are resources to help public law librarians, which we're gonna share with you a little bit today. The biggest one being your county law library brethren. Um, so I'm excited to be here today as somebody who's experienced both sides of the coin um, to help you help your communities with their legal, legal reference needs. And why is this important? Um, when it comes to civil legal needs, we have a huge justice gap in this country. A 2017 report by Legal Services Corporation on the justice gap found that 71% of low income households had experienced a legal problem in the prior year. 86% of those households um, received inadequate or no legal help for those issues. So unlike with criminal uh, law, there is no public defender system for civil legal issues. So if somebody launches a small claims case against you, you don't get assigned a lawyer. If you wanna get divorced, you don't get assigned a lawyer. And low income households cannot afford to pay for a lawyer. Uh, further to this in 2015, a report came out um, that noted that ideally there should be two pro bono lawyers for every 10,000 clients. That same report noted that Oregon has half that number. So essentially one pro bono lawyer for every 10,000 clients. Um, and I'm pretty certain that that has not changed. So where do these people turn? They come to us, right? They come to the public library. Like healthcare professionals though, our goal is to do no harm when we're helping these people. And there is a lot of harm that can be done with legal reference. So do tread carefully. Um, what you're gonna wanna do often is refer these people to your county law libraries. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that now. So I want you to imagine that you are working the public desk and someone comes into your library and asks you one of these questions. Think about what would you do? What is your reaction? 
do you think that you could answer this? So for instance, um, the question, at what age can I leave my child home alone, specifically in Oregon? This is a common question that I get in the law library. I also got it quite frequently in the public library. As my public librarian, I logged on to, you know, Dr. Google and would Google it and what comes up? 10. That's what Google says. That's the answer. As a law librarian, I've learned more. I've learned that uh, it is more complex than that. 10 is not actually the right answer and giving somebody that answer of 10 could be leading them into harm. What I have learned that my standard answer to this question now is that there is no age in Oregon that you can leave a child home alone, but here's the resources where you can find out when you can leave a child home alone and I have a list of those that I, I like to give to people. Um, so other questions on here, uh, you know, the I need a simple power of attorney form or I was told the law, the library has a form for getting a divorce. These are the dreaded forms question. Unfortunately, Oregon has few and far between forms. Uh, they're not. And when we do have forms, they're not what you think. They're not the uh, you go to the DMV, you fill out the box that says last name, fill out the box that says first name. That's not really how forms, the ones that do exist in Oregon work. They're more like templates where you can take an example of something that exists and then draft your own. I after I moved from uh, the public library to the law library uh, and learned more about the system, I had a one of my former coworkers reach out to me and be like, you'd be so proud of me. I, I helped this person with a legal question. They came in and asked for a power of attorney form. I got on the computer with them. We looked for it and we found one. Great. It's not that simple. Unfortunately, I wish it was. Well, what about the question, I need a copy of Brown v. Board of Education. This is something that as a public librarian, you could answer because they have identified exactly the resource that they need. You are not making any interpretation of what they're looking for. Uh, you are just providing them with a resource. Think of it more of like document delivery in this case. But if somebody were to ask for, I need the statute on dog bites, there is a little bit of interpretation that could take place. So if you were to look up the statute for dog bites and provide them with that, that would be providing them with legal advice because you're saying this is the statute you need. If you were to say, here's the resource where I looked up the statutes and then here's how you could search for dog bites, then they could make the decision on which statute that needs. So it's a small distinction. Um, but it's the sort of thing that as a public librarian, I was always trained, find the answer, give them the answer. As a law librarian, it becomes more complex. It's not find the answer and give them the answer. It becomes find the resource to show them so that they can find their own answer. Slide. Absolutely. That does not mean that we cannot help people who approach us at the public library information desk. Um, absolutely, you can still help people. I think the big distinction to think of is, am I being asked for a primary source, like a statute or a case law, a, a, an opinion in case law? You cannot research that for somebody uh, because essentially what you're doing is saying, this is the statute that applies to the case. You don't know that. You don't know which statute applies to their case. You don't know if there are regulations that have affected that statute or case law opinions. And if you think about what's happened over the past year uh, with COVID, we've had a raft of regulations have come out from agencies from OSHA to BOLI to government mandates that have changed a lot of employment law, landlord tenant law, all of these other things. So if you looked up a statute and gave it to them and said, this is the statute that applies to your case, uh, you're missing a huge portion of what makes up the law. So that's why it's so hard to do this kind of research. We can't do that. What you can do is you can refer people to secondary sources that are going to have authoritative articles written about their topic that will then refer them back to the statutes 
case law, regulations, ordinances, mandates that might affect their case. I would encourage you to bookmark these sites to help people when you're working on the desk. Um, Oregon State Bar has an information for the public site that is full of articles on different topic areas and videos. These are created for the lay person. So it's easy to understand information about a certain topic area. Legal Aid Services of Oregon, uh, their website, OregonLawHelp.org, also has a phenomenal wealth of resources, articles, pamphlets, guides, written for the layperson. The beauty of these two resources is they are written by Oregon uh, law about Oregon law for Oregonians. Because remember, jurisdiction is a big issue as well. So you want to make sure that whatever you're giving to your Oregon community members is going to be applicable in Oregon courts. Now with that form question, Oregon has very few template forms. Um, if somebody asks you for a form for something, I want you to start at your local county courthouse pages, uh, whichever court they're gonna need to file that form in. So if it's a municipal situation, look to your city's website, see if they have forms. If it's in your local county circuit court, look to your circuit court. If there's nothing at the circuit court level, go up and look at the Oregon Judicial Department forms. Uh, see if there's a form there. There's a caveat with your circuit court forms. Each county circuit court has its own rules. Um, so you might find a form for Lane County Court that is not applicable in Crook County Court. So be careful when you're searching those that it really will um, be valid in your county court. If you've gone through these resources and any self-help guides you might have in your library, like think about your NOLOs. The issue with the NOLOs is, again, they're written for a national audience, so be aware of that. Um, it's going to be general information that may or may not be applicable in Oregon courts. Once you've used these secondary resources and you've exhausted your ability to help your, your patron, this is when we want you to refer to one of your county law libraries. So what about county law libraries? Well, in Oregon, each county is statutorily required to provide a law library. We are located in a wide variety of locations from inside the courthouse in our own buildings to inside a public library. Even though each county is required to have a law library, this doesn't mean that all li law libraries are the same. Similar to public libraries in different parts of the state, there is a lot of variability between county law libraries. County law libraries get their funding from the state. In the short version, a portion of filing fees from the court go into a central pot that then gets proportionally distributed to the counties based on the percentage that, that got paid in. So as you can imagine, the funding between county law libraries drastically differs and greatly impacts the service offerings. Some county law libraries might just be a copy of the Oregon Revised Statutes on a bookshelf in a courtroom, while others are fully staffed with multiple law librarians with physical and electronic resources available, and there's also law libraries everywhere in between. So I want you to envision the counties of Oregon. Uh -huh. Think about where you're located or where you might be considering moving to or getting a job in the future. Think about your counties. Think about where you think that you might be able to refer uh, people to, given the fact that you now know not all law libraries are created equally. Where do you think that you would send somebody to? Got that in your head? Now let's see what, what the law libraries look like. So here is what is actually available. The counties with the green marker are those that have dedicated law library staff and full hours. So you should feel confident referring a patron to one of these locations. The yellow marker has dedicated law library staff but have limited hours. 
While you should feel confident referring a patron to one of these locations, you might also want to consider some of those limitations and use your best judgment if you should also mention one of the green dot locations. The red marker locations do not have dedicated law library staff. Their resources and offerings may vary, so depending upon how self-sufficient your patron is, you might want to consider where you refer them to. You might notice that we have a separate color for Multnomah County. This is because they are in transition. Their law library is currently moving, but they also have a legal resource center that has recently opened. Last we heard, when the law library reopens, they are only going to be available in person to legal professionals, but can help pro se's remotely. And the Legal Resource Center is not staffed by law librarians and can only help people with navigating the Multnomah courts. We don't know what the long-term impacts are going to be, but for my part, being in neighboring Washington County, we have already seen an uptick in the number of patrons that indicate they had previously gone to the Multnomah Law Library and are now needing to come to us. Next slide. And now for our COVID disclaimer. So everything we just covered is for normal non-COVID times. During the pandemic, law libraries, like public libraries, have responded differently. I have here the matrix that we use in Washington County for our service offerings tied to open level. So while in normal times, we are open for full hours without capacity limitations, depending upon where our county is at, things are different. I'm sure many other law libraries are very similar. So until there is a full return to normal, I recommend that you or your patron check with your law library before just heading over to see where they're at and what their offerings are. Next slide. Perfect. And what can your patrons expect when they go to uh, the county law library? Um, since county law libraries are focused on legal information needs, you can expect to find more targeted legal resources and services than you might be able to provide um, at your local public library. Uh, so first of all, most county law libraries are going to have access to the big legal research databases. Uh, this is your Lexis Advance, Westlaw. Uh, these contain uh, all of the federal and state uh, statutes, case law opinions, regulations, secondary resources, like those articles and explainers, all those things that uh, your customers are going to need to be able to do their legal research. Uh, these databases are very expensive, so it's rare to find them at a public library. And often a county law library will only offer access to one or the other uh, just because of that expense. Um, you will often find um, the case law opinions, statutes, and regulations in print, depending on their availability. Uh, some law libraries will just have a more current collection, whereas others will have more of a historical archive as well, uh, which is very important with your case law since that can be applicable all the way back to the beginning. Uh, really important, you're gonna get a lot of publications from Oregon legal publishers. Uh, these are going to be things like publications from the Oregon State Bar, the Oregon Criminal Defense Lawyers Association, um, and other self-published works by Oregon lawyers. Uh, you might get guides from uh, municipal publishers and other agencies that are um, interested in a specific area of law. So that breadth and that um, wealth of Oregon-specific information is really important. Uh, many of the county law libraries also have access to the Oregon Judicial Department's uh, court records database. So this will be all the information and filings related to um, cases that go through circuit court. Uh, and your um, self-represented litigants, they might need that information to move their divorce forward. Maybe they need to go back and get an old custody order. Um, a lot of the, lab, the libraries are also going to have more self-help resources, sort of beyond the NOLO, so more topical uh, topic explainers. Uh, we have the Nutshell series um, and other explainers that are going to help people, again, find those primary resources that are going to help them. 
in terms of services, um, the most important is assistance, uh, both in person by staff, which we're going to talk about in a second, um, and also written uh, topic guides. So Amy's library, the Washington County Law Library, has a lot of really great research guides by legal topic. So thinking back to those four websites I shared with you earlier, uh, also look to some of the county law library websites and see if they have created their own topic guides and research explainers. Many law libraries offer uh, classes and presentations on legal topics as well. So uh, here at Deschutes Public Library, we invite lawyers in to do overviews on family law, estate law. Uh, we've done updates every time there's been an eviction moratorium. Um, some other county law libraries offer forms clinics. So Columbia County, uh, they do uh, clinics where they help people fill out the state paperwork for uh, family law issues and expungements. A step above that is you will often find legal clinics at law libraries. So at DPL, we do a lawyer in the library. Uh, Clackamas County does a lawyer in the library. So look to see uh, who in your area might offer that service. And then most of the county law libraries are also going to offer um, meeting space and technology, some of it specific like court recording software. So you can listen to audio recordings from court. Uh, some are starting to set up uh, Zoom rooms for remote hearings. Uh, most offer the basics, printing, faxing, scanning, and some actually offer phones, which can be a big issue for people as well, especially those uh, low income and those um, experiencing houselessness. Here though, is your number one resource at your county law library. And it is your law librarians. Uh, these pictures show us in person and uh, via Zoom. So the first photo where we are in person was our last in person get together in October, 2019. Um, and then the screenshot of the Zoom meeting uh, was our last get together virtually, which was actually just last Friday. Uh, so we get together, we try to get together a couple of times a year to check in, see what everybody's doing, share ideas. Law librarian training varies uh, across the state as well. So many of our law librarians have uh, a JD, so they have their legal degree. Uh, some have a paralegal certificate. Um, most, not all, have their MLS. What all of these people have is experience navigating legal reference questions, which hopefully you've picked up on by now is a very involved process. Um, With law librarians, even if they have a JD, they cannot answer a legal question. So they're still not licensed by the bar, right? They, they can't do those things that fall over the line into the unauthorized practice of law. But again, what we all have is that experience. We know the law. We know the resources that are available in you know, digital format, print format, and organizational. Um, to help people get the answers and the support they're going to need to really answer their legal information needs. You might not have had a lot of interaction with a law librarian. Uh, historically, our, law, our county law libraries served the legal community, right? They serve the judges and the lawyers. Um, over the past couple of decades, that has been shifting and now more than 50% of our county law libraries, or sorry, most of our county law libraries are spending at least 50% of their time and resources to help self-represented litigants. The other thing to know about law librarians is they are often uh, solo librarians. They are often working full-time gigs at part-time hours. Um, so they don't have a lot of extra time for outreach and networking, which is why you don't see them at a lot of other library functions. Um, but please do not be afraid to contact them.
They're librarians just like you. I hope these photos show this. They are friendly people and they want to help their communities. So with that said, um, public, law librarians, a lot of times we are looking for doing partnerships with public libraries. The one thing is that law librarians, something that both Jenny and I discovered individually and then when we started talking, we were like, oh, you saw that too, is that a lot of law librarians, it's a little bit of an insular community they don't have the public library experience of knowing how to do outreach or that they even need to do outreach. Um, so a lot of times being able to come to the law librarian may be your best avenue uh, in terms of, of gaining a partnership. But many of law libraries are looking for ways to expand their services. Um, so one of those ways is partnering with the public libraries. A couple of examples of these partnerships are in Washington and Klamath counties. In Washington County, we partnered with two local public libraries for a program called Law Librarians in the Library. In normal times, we would go into the two public libraries once a month each to provide law library services there. Not only did this expand our hours uh, that we were available in the day, but it also brought services to other places in the county for people who had trouble accessing our, our location in Hillsborough. In Klamath County, the law library uh, brought legal professionals to the public library for presentations on legal topics. Since making this slide, I've also learned about uh, something going on in Columbia County um, and their public library, uh, the Columbia the public library in Columbia County got a grant and then they partnered with the uh, law library in Columbia County to provide technology and that has primarily been used to create Zoom rooms which has really helped the access to justice movement there. Uh, so it's not just programming that you could do but also it could be in terms of uh, expanding service options. Now, these are just a couple of examples of current par partnerships. Um, so if you have any ideas or you've seen any other examples, I recommend you reach out to your, your local law librarian and see if they would have any interest in doing something similar. But as Jenny said, a lot of uh, our law librarians are solo librarians and they don't have a lot of extra time to plan these partnerships. But do reach out if you have an idea because they are interested. Um, telling you about them being solo librarians, not having a lot of times, it's not to discourage you. Um, it, in fact, we did a survey of uh, county law librarians and 90% of the respondents said that they would have an interest in partnering in some capacity. So please do reach out. Um, and it doesn't even have to be a full program partnership like we've done with our public libraries. Law librarians also do legal reference training to public library staff, which can help you be a front, uh, the front line in answering legal research questions. Fantastic. Good. Yeah. Excellent. So if you have one of those you know, more fully staffed law libraries near you, feel free to call them directly. In fact, I challenge you to visit or call your local law library, no matter what level, but just to meet the people in charge, get a sense of what they offer and what it will be like for your patrons if you refer them over there. If, you're, if you are far from a law library, we know in Oregon, a lot of our counties are really huge geographically and it can be really far uh you know i know lane county um you know it's really far from florence to get to eugene so if you're really far from your law library or if you only have access to an un unstaffed law library feel free to reach out to one of the the larger county law libraries on the list that we showed earlier um, you can find a list of all of the County Law Library contact information at this link, um, Oregon County Law Libraries. We're all here to help all Oregonians. So uh, feel free to call one of those bigger ones if you feel the need. It, the other option is you can also use AnswerLand, which has a legal queue monitored by Oregon law librarians. 
do be specific that you want your question bumped to that legal group. We see a lot of well-meaning librarians on this service try to tackle legal questions and they end up inadvertently giving legal advice or incorrect information. Just like in person, if you can't help someone with the Oregon self-help legal sites, uh, bump it up to your county law librarians. It may take a day or two to get the answer back, but it's gonna be worth your time to wait. And that is uh, the end of what we had to share with you today. Amy, do you have any last thoughts? Just remember that we are a resource uh, here for you, just like the other resources you have in your library. Uh, we're just a phone call, email, sometimes car right away. So don't feel free to reach out. We are friendly people, even though, you know, we deal with a scary topic. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you both so much. Really appreciate you taking the time to put together the present this presentation. Um, anybody have any questions? Natalie or Alice? Yeah, well, we've got the chat yeah. there. I appreciate the material. I had to come in a little late, but I picked up a lot of useful stuff already. And I work closely with Sue Ludington on a few other things. So yeah, always a great resource. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks for being here, Natalie. Thank you. Thanks, Buzzy. Yeah, and thanks, Alice. Nice seeing or hearing your voice mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> Thank you, you too. Great work. So I have a question for some of the smaller libraries. Yeah. Um, is there anything um, you think they can do, like either in terms of their collection or something, to help bolster their patrons' access to legal resources? I'm sorry, I, I missed the first part. You were breaking out a little bit for public libraries. Yeah, for small public libraries, is there is there anything you think they can do with their either with their collections or anything to help bolster their patrons access to some legal resources? So be, being from one of the bigger law libraries, we rely heavily upon the NOLO books and what uh, and that public libraries offer those we don't circulate our material uh, except to uh, attorneys. Um, but NOLO books are a great location to start. It gives a good overview. It also introduces legal terms that you might need because once you get into the more legally books, there's not an explanation um, where the NOLO books have that explanation. Um, and you need to know the, the the terminology to use when you get into the legal books. So NOLO books are a really great starting point. The other location uh, to be looking is really knowing some of those online resources. Um, it's great to make things happen in your collection. Unfortunately, when things get updated, law books are just so expensive. Um, I had crazy sticker shock when I when I joined the law library, you know, I was I was used to going like, oh, this book is is twenty thirty dollars. I have to think about this one. Whereas twenty thirty dollars in the law library, you're like, I'll buy eight. Um, it's especially for smaller libraries that have to be very cognizant of where their funds are going. Um, being able to offer that introduction to help people know. And that actually helps out the law library as well, because if somebody can check out a, an introductory book at their local public library, read it on their own time, do that preliminary research, they can then come into the law library and be able to utilize their time better because our stuff can't leave. And so you're stuck in the law library, you know, a little bit like maybe your college days being stuck in the library. Yeah. It's not, it's not the best. It's not the most conducive to, to a lot of, of study, but people do it and it works. Um, but being able to, to bolster that initial collection that's written for a starting point. 
Does yeah. so that help answer your question, Buzzy? Yeah, that was great. Yeah, and, and I, I would definitely make still... use of those um, resources that are available that, that Amy referenced and just link to them from your website. Uh, the Oregon Law Help and the, the Oregon State Bar info for the public. Because, um, yeah, the, the Oregon publications are very expensive and they update a lot. So I guess the equivalent would be thinking about, you know, here in Deschutes County, we're lucky because we have uh, the community college and the university. We don't have to worry about buying those academic books that are very expensive because we have those other libraries that supply that. So think about your county law library the same way. You know, you, you don't necessarily need to supply those resources if they're available. That's maybe not always the case across the state. Great, thanks. 